If you have a 2013 to 2019 police interceptor utility, you will find that the rear doors have no cutouts for the speakers, although the vehicles themselves on the doors have speakers, so they're completely concealed and you can't hear them at all. So what you could do is you can go out and buy a Ford Explorer trim panel, which fits exactly the same, and then you'll get this extra cubby and then you know have this. But uh, the trim and coloring may not match, uh, so you're gonna have to shop around a little bit. And they cost you know about $100 on the low end. So if you don't wanna go out and change all your parts, what you can do is you can cut out a hole for the speaker to show through. So if you look on the back side, you'll actually see a template that they have laid out for you. And you'll see this circle. And this circle is just a kind of a pattern that you can use to cut out. But, you know, if you, if you were to cut it out exactly, you would find that it would end up with the circle kind of being something like this. So it's not exactly centered. It would look pretty, pretty poorly. Uh, so the solution that I've come up with is I've designed this 3D grate grill that we'll go over that will kind of resemble what a factory speaker cover would look like. And so when you buy a set of these, they come with one for each side and then they come with a template and this, you can use this for both sides. You just flip it around. So what we're going to do here is try to line up the best we can. It pretty closely uh, resembles the contours of this cut at this uh, channel here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a piece of tape. I just happen to have some leftover HVAC tape and it holds really nicely in contours. So what I'm gonna do is line this up, best I can figure, something like that. And then I'm gonna put a piece of tape lay this tape down to eliminate as much wobbliness as possible while we're trying out our line. I'm going to verify that these edges look good to me. And then I have a silver sharpie here that will help me see the black. And I'm just going to go and make a trace all the way around the outside or the inside. like that, and then we'll remove our template. So you'll take your saw and you're gonna to wanna to make sure not to go outside of the lines too much, but there is a flange of just over a quarter inch that will help kind of conceal all the jagged edges. So you have a little bit of play, but it would be better that this fits in snug and then you have to take a Dremel uh, or some sort of cutting tool and just board out a little bit further in some spots, then have this sit in there and be super wiggly. And then, you know, it's, it's not gonna sit as well and it's not gonna bond as well. The tighter fit you can get it, the first go around, the better the epoxy is gonna stick in there and hold everything in really tightly. So I'm gonna drill holes on the corners, a uh, good spot for me to get my saw in and started. And then we'll go ahead and start cutting. Okay, with our hole cut, we've test fitted it at this point and verified that it fits good. Um, if it's a little crooked um, from where you would like, you can just trim down the edges, figure out which edges need to be trimmed down more and get it nice and fit. You want to fit so this first gap or this first lip is fully flush. So you're gonna obviously have this stand up about three millimeters, but the inner lip, you should not be able to barely get your fingernail in around the edges. So once you've done that, you're going to take a two-part epoxy. Um, it better if it's meant for plastic, so I'm going to use this plastic bonder. And I've mixed some up, and we're just going to go around the edges. And you're not going to want to, you're not going to want to 
go in like around the inner or the outer edge, you're going to want to focus on the inner edge. Um, if it oozes out, you can wipe it before it dries, but, um, and that's good chance you're going to get some oozing out. If you have a better application method than I have, I just mix it up with a toothpick. They do have those epoxies where, uh, as you squeeze it out, it has So I have it all ready to glue up. Let's grab it and start by kind of hooking it in on the bottom. Just like that. And then I'm gonna take something really heavy, like this really heavy block I have. I'm gonna set it on there in the middle. Now you can see I did get some level of oozing down here, so I'm just going to use a toothpick to flatten it best I can. And then I'll come back with my paper towel and just wipe it. Now we're gonna let this dry. It's gonna take about 30 minutes uh, for this to set up to the point that we can flip it and reinforce glue on the backside. If you get a little too much oozing on the edge, you can also use uh, a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on uh, a towel, paper towel. Um, you don't wanna let this stuff dry too much because it will suck some of the oils out of the plastic. But uh, if you dry it pretty good um, after rubbing it on there, it'll do a good job of removing some of the adhesive. All right, so it's been a while. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. Perfect, so now that we've got it all mounted up there. And now we're gonna put even more glue on this backside now uh, in these cracks. So now we have it all set up on the back side. You're gonna to wanna to let this fully cure uh, in a warm environment before you go and install it. Uh, when you are slamming in your panel to pop in all the clips around the edges, you might end up uh, popping it out or breaking something if you don't let it cure all the way. Here's the finished result. You'll notice that it looks pretty factory and the more time and effort you put into precisely cutting the insert and um, doing a clean glue job, the better it's gonna look. One thing to note is that this is carbon fiber reinforced polycarbonate, so it is extremely strong plastic, very UV and heat resistant and cold resistant, and should be impact resistant as well. So if you get this getting kicked or hit, it should last uh, quite well. The other thing to notice, uh, this is a design feature, is that the speaker is actually gonna fit right around here. So only about 75% of the speaker will be lined up with um, this grill. But to avoid kind of the weird look to it, because you obviously don't wanna cut into this uh, lump area where the speaker would normally go, in order to help with the visual appearance, whenever this grill is looked at at an angle, kind of like how most people will see it, it all disappears because of the depth of the honeycomb grill. So hopefully this uh, is helpful for you and your interceptor and in, in getting it back on the road and getting full functionality of all the features and the speakers. Uh, and if it was helpful for you, I appreciate a review and any recommendations to other interceptor owners. Thanks for watching.